Um, so yeah, basically anybody that's uh, rejoining, basically now we want to switch and show reclamation of unused resources. So this is going in and looking at different opportunities to save resources, save on capacity, save costs in my environment. So what I want to do now is talk a little bit about what reclamation is and then how you can go and see that in the UI and configure it and leverage the reclamation piece. So, you know, like we talked about with capacity, you know, that's looking at from the cluster level, you know, how much capacity you, you have in your environment. But if you're running short on capacity, you want to go and reclaim some resources. That's when you want to go and look for virtual machines that you can go and, you know, delete or or you know power off or whatever to to basically free up resources in you in your environment. So that's why we call it reclamation. Um, and because you're actually reclaiming resources, you're both saving capacity and your you're saving uh, saving costs, so you're reducing the cost of your environment. Technically, you're deferring costs. You know, so basically, it allows you to use what you have, so you don't have to purchase new hardware. Um, you know, as soon. So there's uh, four main um, things for reclamation. So the first one is powered off virtual machines. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You know, VMs that have been powered off for a while. You've got idle virtual machines. Um, we have. Uh, snapshots on virtual machines, and then orphan disks. So orphan disks are um, basically disks or VMDKs that are on a data store. They're not attached to a virtual machine. So you know, somebody went in and said, remove from inventory on a virtual machine instead of deleting it from disk. You know, you can leave those VMDKs behind, or you know, it could have been you know some some error, some something happened when a VM was being deleted and left some stuff behind. You know, those VMDKs can be, can be quite large. So uh, you want to be able to identify those and go clean those up. So with that, I want to just switch over and show you what it looks like in the UI. So again, I'm going back to the launch pad. And since we're talking capacity here uh, for reclamation, I'm going to go into capacity. And you see here, re reclaim. So this is where I want to go and look at my reclamation. So let me pick a different data center that should have more reclamation stuff. OK, well, it's taking its time today. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I just created a custom data center that contains all of my data centers just to, to make it a little easier for, for illustration purposes. So uh, a few things to point out here on the reclamation page is my cost savings. So I can save over $17,000 a month if I go and do all of the, re the reclamation recommendations from the system. So pretty substantial cost savings there. Those recommendations are aco across over 1,000 virtual machines. And then I've got over 1,000 uh, orphan disks. So you know, a lot of opportunities here to go and optimize the environment, clean stuff up, and save quite a bit of money. Um, and from a from a usage perspective, you can see over here from CPUs, I've got over 1,000 uh, vCPUs that I can reclaim. Memory is 1.2 terabytes of memory. And then disk space looks like uh, over <laughs> 66 terabytes of disk space that I can go and reclaim. So, you know, really, really big numbers. You know, if you're, you know, talk to, to management, say, I can save this much money, you know, you, you would be a hero. So that's, uh, that's the kind of the, the stuff here that we're, we're able to see. Now, let me scroll down here and kind of show you what some of these recommendations get you. So uh, let me see what this first one has. So I'm just going to pick the first one here. So we've got a, a virtual machine. It's showing here that it's uh, it's powered off. So say I'm in the powered off section. My cost savings for this one virtual machine is $700, $790 a month. And it's using 3.4 terabytes of disk space. And it's been powered off for 14 days. So not not too long, you know, but it's been powered off for for a little bit of time. You know, maybe it's not needed since it's been powered off. Now let's say, you know, I, I know it's no longer needed. I want to go in and delete the virtual machine. I have a, a couple of options here. So the first one is schedule an action. So this is say, you know, maybe I want to open a change control and say I want to delete it on, on the weekend. I can go in here and create a job. Um, you know, delete VM. I can, you know, set my my Schedule, say I'm going to do it Saturday at midnight. Um, and say, yeah, send me an email. And then have it go off and actually delete those vir that virtual machine for me at that particular time. 
and then just sends me a notification when it's done. So that's kind of hands off. Um, we also have the option here, just delete VM. I can just say, yep, go and delete it. I hit delete here. It goes straight into vCenter, deletes the virtual machine, and it's gone. So it makes it really easy. I don't have to do any context switching. I don't have to log into vCenter. I can just you know, clean it up right from here. Now, let's say I looked at this virtual machine, and I know, you know maybe this is part of a legal hold. I need to keep this one for a little bit longer. But you know, I just want to make it go away. You know, I can just hit exclude virtual machine, say, yep, exclude it. And now I've removed it from the list. And it won't recommend that virtual machine, uh, for, recommend um, to clean up that virtual machine. Now, let's say if it does change, if I scroll down here, well, if it updates, there we go. Scroll down here on the bottom, show excluded virtual machines, and you see it's listed down here as an excluded virtual machine. So, you know, I can go in here and select it and say include it again, and it'll go back and bring it back into the list and start monitoring it again. So, really easy to to you know both you know, do the reclamation action, you know, exclude it if I need to. So, pretty uh, pretty useful there. So, like I said, you know, that's the powered off virtual machines. If I go to idle virtual machines, we can see something very similar here. But with idle virtual machines, since they're powered on, they're consuming CPU memory and disk, disk space. So you'll see here it's showing my, my cost savings, $31 per month. I can reclaim two CPUs, four gigabytes of memory, and 40 gigabytes of, of disk space. And this one has been idle for 98 days. So again, you know, this is uh, you know, helping me see you know, what, I can, uh, what I can free up in my environment. And just like before, I can schedule an action. So because it's an idle virtual machine, I can either power it off to save the CPU and memory, or I can delete it to save CPU memory and disk space. So if I want to you know, do the safe thing to say, let's just power it off for now, um, and then you know, give it another week or two, and then I'll go and delete it if nobody complains, you know, we can kind of go through that process. And once I, once I power it off, then it'll get flagged as, um, you know, as a powered off virtual machine, and then I can go through the process of deleting that. So, you know, if I want to do a conservative, uh, you know, conservative rep, um, reclamation, I can do that. Power it off first, and then delete it later. And again, like I say, we have the delete and power off actions straight from here. Exclude virtual machine. Again, I can exclude the virtual machine if I decide I, I you know, want to ignore the recommendation. Snapshots. Uh, I think this one is, you know, a really important one. You know, it's easy to lose track of some snapshots. They can be out there for for quite some time. You know, they're just consuming a lot of disk space. Like this one here, you see, I can save thirteen dollars per month. It's using seventy gig of disk space, and that snapshot is over five hundred days old. So, very, very old snapshot. It's very unlikely that it's needed. So, you know, I can just go in here and say, yeah, delete the snapshot, and it'll go off into vCenter and delete the snapshot for me. Or I can again schedule it. And have it automatically delete that snapshot on the schedule time that I that I specify. Hopefully that makes sense. You're looking at it from those different um, three different perspectives. The last one here is the orphan disk. So, like I said uh, before, orphan disks are VMDKs on a data store that are that are not attached to a virtual machine. So basically, they're not doing anything. So it's looking at things like the modified date on the file. So even if they were being used somewhere, like on another vCenter that you're not monitoring, maybe you have a shared data store between vCenters, you know, it can look at the modified date of that VMDK to catch you know, if it's actually being used, even though it can't see the virtual machine, it can detect that as well. But you can see here, um, I've got a VMDK, it costs $3 per month using a little over 12 gig of disk space. And <laughs> it's been 1,588 days uh, since that that VMDK has been modified, so it's been there, done nothing for many years. So unlikely it's needed, but um, so orphan disks are a little different. So this one you can you can go in here and you can export it, and it'll give you the list. Um, and then we just give you the list of VMDKs, and basically say you know you need to go and do the due diligence, make sure that it's not actually used, and then go delete it, um, delete it yourself. Um, so that's you know a little. Yeah, a little safeguard in there just to make sure that you know you know for sure that the VMDK is not used. Um, so if you if you're ever you know wondering what uh, what these different things mean, they have a little info icon here that explains what this what the different dimensions are. 
The last thing I want to show is the settings, so how you can tweak this. So the first one is up here is showing cost savings. So if you don't want to see cost for some reason, you can turn it off. Um, I know most customers want to see the cost savings because that's a big driver in, in reclamation is actually saving your cost. Uh, I'm going to skip down to the these options first. So powered off VMs. So this is where you can control the threshold on when a powered off VM is flagged. By default, it's seven days. So the VM has to be powered off continuously for seven days before it'll be flagged. So let's say maybe you want to do 30 days. You can go in here and change it. So it has to be powered off for a whole month before you consider deleting it. You know, you can go there and, and tweak it. And it'll change uh, change those VMs to it'll change the VMs that are flagged to make sure they're powered off continuously for 30 days. Idle VMs. So idle VMs are VMs that are that are basically not using much CPU. I'll talk about the idleness criteria here in a second. So the, the first condition is the VM needs to be idle for continuously for seven days. Um, and then for, um, you know, when you, when you first provision a virtual machine, it's often that it's, it's very often that it's idle, it sits idle for a certain period of time before the owner or the requester of the virtual machine starts using it. So in order to give them time to start using a virtual machine, that's what this, this threshold here is. So it says, I'm not even going to start looking to see if it's idle until it's 30 days old. So that way we don't flag any of those new virtual machines. So I'm going to switch back up here to the idleness criteria. So this is where you can kind of tweak what the definition of idle means. So you can see here it's looking for VMs that consume less than 100 megahertz of CPU. So you can change this to you know, whatever threshold you want. Um, and then it's set to, it has to be less than that for 100% of the time. So the problem with that is you may have, say, backup jobs or AV scans that do create some CPU spikes. You know, maybe you want to ignore those. So I can say maybe set this to 95% of the time. So now I'll give it, you know, give it a little bit of time where it can do those AV scans. And as long as it's, you know, below 100, 100 megahertz of CPU usage for 95% of the time, then it'll be flagged. So it gives you that, you know, that little buffer you can add in there for some of those routine tasks. The other thing we do get questions about is, you know, why is network not here? Why is storage not here? Things like that. Well, when you actually look at the metrics, when, there is CPU activity when there is network activity. There is CPU activity when there is disk activity. So there's really no reason to look at these other metrics because they all create CPU usage. So CPU usage is good enough. It gets it gets the network usage. It gets the disk usage just by looking at CPU. So uh, the next one here is snapshots. So this is looking for snapshots that are over a certain age. You know, I generally see you know, customers do like three days um, or less. You know, they, don't want, they don't want snapshots to be around for an extended period of time. And then orphan disks. This is where you can say you know the VM has to be you know not modified for at least you know, 30 days before it'll flag it. So all these settings, you can go and tweak these. And then, you know, that that night when it runs the, the calculations, it will go and update all of the, the recommendations based on the settings that you've done here. So it's not immediate. It's done that night. So the night you make the change, it'll do when it does the, the, re, the reclamation um, calculations, it will update. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to cover on reclamation.